Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the TIG Welding How-To Series, TIG Welding for Beginners. Today I'm going to show you how to do a TIG welded corner joint. Okay. So today we are going to be using a couple pieces of 1 8 plate again and we're going to tack them together in a shape like this. So again for the torch setup uh, in case you haven't go back to the torch setup how to video as well as watch the TIG welding lap joint. I give a better explanation of how to ball the tungsten but uh, just for the sake of telling you guys again I'm going to be using a 1 8 setup completely with a gas lens. So it's 1 8 tungsten 1 8 collets and I am going to run a number eight cut today as well as using one eight filler rod. For settings today, because we're using one eighth plate, we can dial it back quite a bit. I had it cranked up there earlier for something else, but I'll take it back to about 170 amps. I think somewhere around there is going to be perfect. Okay, so the machine's running. So we're going to check to make sure that our edges are pretty straight. Uh, I ripped these down on the table saw, so they're going to be pretty darn close to being flat. It's probably a flatter joint there. Let's go with this side. It's always tricky tacking these guys together, but a good way to do it is if you get another plate of the same thickness, put it up here, and you can rest this guy on top of it like that. So you can actually arrange your little corner to corner setup right there. So you actually have your overhang like this. You can tack on the inside, it makes it easier. And you can straighten it out kind of how you want it for this side. There we go. So we've got a pretty even joint here, but this is how you take a look at it. Everything looks pretty even like so. Uh, leave it about 90, pretty close. Okay, so when you're practicing these guys, typically the joint is usually welded like this, so that it's in a 90 degree position. Uh, just for the sake of learning today though, we'll set it so it's kind of like welding the roof of a house, like this. That way, gravity's gonna be pulling your weld equally to either side. So it'll make it a little easier to put the weld right on top like that. If you're up like this, it's not that hard. However, you will have gravity pulling it more towards uh, the downward side here. So if you're just beginning, I'd recommend setting it up like this. So again, like we explained in the lap joint TIG weld video, when you wire brush, we're gonna wire brush lengthwise like this. If you're wire brushing from side to side, you're not actually clearing any of the oxide and dust out of the weld joint. So wire brush lengthwise. Okay, so again, another rule of thumb, general rule of thumb is that the angle of your tungsten and the angle of your filler rod will always tend to be 90 degrees from each other. So if your tungsten is leaned out quite a bit like that, the angle of your filler rod will be about 90 to that. Your tungsten's super steep, your angle of your filler rod will be about 90 to that as well. So just a general rule of thumb of how the two feed well together. Okay, let's spark it up. Okay, everything went pretty good on that one. Let's stop and take a look. So that one turned out pretty good. Overall, the weld appearance is pretty shiny, which is what you're looking for. You don't really want any cloudiness to the weld. You want to be able to see an equal amount of shine from start to finish. Um, straight off the bat, from the first couple dabs here, it's pretty shiny, which is good. Typically what happens a lot with people is that the beginning gets really hot really fast. So just be very sheepish about how you start, but you still need good heat to start it. So don't be too shy with it, but you definitely want to give it good fill right off the start. Uh, if you give it good fill right off the start, it will actually chill the weld a little bit, which is good. So you can keep a pretty even and shiny appearance for the length of the weld. Like I explained in the lap joint TIG weld, you can see our gas burn or our arc burn. It's the white strip on either side of the weld. It's relatively even. If you have a torch angle, 
that is uneven, pointing more one side than the other, and you will definitely have an uneven arc burn on either side of the weld. So that's a good rule of thumb, is if you have a look at your arc burn and it's even both sides, then chances are your uh, weld angle was pretty good. All right, let's finish this bad boy off. When you get to the end, like I explained in the lap joint TIG weld demo, you're gonna wanna give it a little bit more fill, but you're definitely gonna want to be backing off the heat quite a bit at the end, so just be ready for that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that one finished up pretty good. You get a pretty even amount of uh, weld throughout the whole length of the corner to corner joint. If you look at it lengthwise like this, kind of uh, what we talked about with the lap joint TIG weld is what you wanna see. You can throw a tape on it or you can measure it however you'd like, but you can kind of see the width of the weld here is gonna be pretty much the same as it is down here. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a weld that's pretty straight the whole way down. You don't want one area that's fatter, one area that's skinnier, kind of like an even plane of weld the whole way down. Another way that you can check to see how much filler rod you have in there, if you have a good enough amount, is the trick that we did with the lap joint TIG weld demo with the ruler. You put the ruler on the side, and if we have any kind of a gap here, like the ruler's lifted off because the filler rod is kind of uh, a little bit too proud, that's an indicator that you just have a little bit too much fill. But as you can see, we're sitting pretty flush, so I'd say the amount of weld we have in there is pretty good. Same with that side. Another trick you can do to see the consistency of your weld is put a ruler down it lengthwise, like this. And it will tell you if you have any low spots, you'll see a big gap under the ruler. If you have any high spots, the ruler will be lifted off the weld. But overall, we're pretty darn close here. One last thing that we can do to kind of visually see how we did is if you look like we did with the other uh, weld demo is we look down the side like this. If the edge of your weld is wetted in pretty straight like this, then that's a good indicator that you had a good amount of fill and a good amount of heat. If you got a weld that's like spilling out here and then it's a little shy and up high here and then spills out again or anything like that, then that just means you're a little uneven with the amount of heat and filler that you use. So, I'd say you're looking for a line that's relatively straight like this. That means that you balanced your weld out pretty good. Another thing I wanted to show you was two examples of pretty common problems that people have when they start learning this TIG joint. This one here is probably the most common out of the two. So if we look at it like this, as you can see, your weld's pretty flat across the top here. So what's happened is basically there's been too much heat. And then if we're using the trick like I showed you with the ruler, you can see what I mean about the whole thing falling flat like this. Obviously on the back side, you have way too much burn through <laughs> and the whole thing has fallen totally flat. So this is a combination of the weld being both too hot and definitely not enough fill. So if the weld starts to get away from you like this, which is pretty common, especially at the start of a weld, is basically just to back off your heat a little bit and add a little bit more fill right away. More fill is gonna cause the beginning of the weld to plump up a little bit and it will chill, uh, which is good because it gives you a little bit more control as you start welding out. This is another example of basically a weld that's too cold, um, which means the fill will pile up a little bit too high. So like we talked about uh, with the ruler trick, you can definitely tell looking down it that we got a pretty extreme gap in between the base plate right here, and the filler rod. So what's happened is that basically the weld has been too cold with too much fill, I think, right away, and that caused a little bit of overfill, which then causes the weld to spill over the edges a little bit. So there we go, we got a couple examples. We got a weld, which probably, hopefully, is what yours is looking like. And we got a couple really common problems here that happen with uh, the corner TIG joint. So watch this video a few times, kind of get the feel for it, and just keep practicing. This is a good one to kind of do as like an intermediate TIG joint. It's a little more difficult, but it will definitely, if you can get it in a couple passes to look all the same, is gonna teach you a lot about weld consistency. So this is a good one to practice with.
All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching this demo on how to TIG weld a corner joint. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this one. I like this weld. Uh, if you give this a try, uh, hit me up on Instagram. Show me how you did. It's at Pacific Arc TIG Welding. You can send me any questions, comments. Uh, let me know how you did. I'd love to see. If you have any other suggestions of other videos you'd like me to make or questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section below. I'll read them. Again, thank you guys very much for watching this. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. The more people that watch these videos, the more videos I'll make. I really appreciate you watching today. Thank